to tell you real quickly about the group here, who you know, and then I want to ask some questions about agents because um, you're probably the only one in this entire three days that can fill us in on some of the stuff mm. that you know. This is a high level at screenwriting group. Um, they've gone through a couple of your courses. Um, you know, some of them are represented, some of them have indie deals, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of them are from out of town. Mm -hmm. um, so, okay, just let's let you know mm -hmm. that. Um, from an agency perspective, I've now talked to a couple of agents who said they're also producing. Did that rule change, or is it no. was it misunderstood? No. Um, it, it, the the rule. Uh, this is what you know. I know this is not the purpose of me sitting here, but I suppose that it, you know, I'll do the best I can in summarizing this. This is the kind of conversation you need about three hours because you really have to. And, and it's not a pleasant conversation, you know. It's not like we go, oh, well, let's have a you know, glass of wine. It's one of those, oh, God, okay. Um, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is, this always um, refers to the kind of, the, 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 um, the threads of the past of what created and caused where we are today. If I were representing actors, and that's really the, 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 the issue here at, at, at large, which is that if you're representing actors under the Screen Actor Gu Gu uh, Guild rules and regulations and under Sacramento, uh, you're not allowed to produce because you start being in a conflict of interest issue. Now, again, you know, it's a whole other discussion. What does it mean about conflict of interest given all these other things that are going on today? And how do you avoid it today anyway? You know, one, one agency represents, you know, the writer, the director, the producer, and the actors in one picture. You don't think he has a conflict of interest? <laughs> um, um, and so what I would say to you is that if you're a literary agent where you don't represent actors, it doesn't say, if you look at the, if, if you look at the, um, uh, uh, the basic agreements, it doesn't say you can't. It doesn't say you can't, but it avoids it. So if you look at, there are many agents out there you'd be surprised who has gotten credit, producer, executive producer, et cetera, um, and only because of that, because it doesn't hit the threshold of a violation under the, under the rules that were with Sacramento. Now, because there is no more contract, it's almost irrelevant. Oh, cool. I, I think so. Now, I'm speaking as an individual. I don't have the, my body of ATA members here saying, you know, we had the group meeting. Some might say, you know, that's not correct. Right? I'm just saying is, for me, all bets are off. But... We still, when I do anything, I always make sure, because I, to be an agent, you have to be bonded. I just got my renewable license last year for another three years, so obviously I have to do things. They check you out. They make sure they do the little forensic stuff, and if there's anything that comes up, you know, why you say about the new media, they can come up on some, uh, uh, you know, on, on the net and find out some, some piece of information, whether it's true or not, before that could put you on pause, you wouldn't even know about it. Somebody could errantly send them a note and say, you know, Larry Bexy, you know, blah, 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 he did this and this at the Hamburger Hammer. Did you know that? <laughs> and they go, oh, my God, he did? <laughs> he drank, really? No notes. No, no, no. <laughs> he, drank, he, drank, he drank Dorothy's tea. Oh, my. You know, before you know that tumbled into, you know, the phone game, right? It wasn't tea. He was sniffing coke in the bathroom, and then he ran over the dog. You know what I mean? Before you know, and, you know <laughs> and you writers, of course, would save me and redo that whole thing. So I had a beautiful resume to kind of clear me up, right? Okay, that's, that's why right right. 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 so, so, is that clear? Then? What? Open the balance. That's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So you get that. So there's nothing preventing you from doing that. They've stayed away from it. So okay. So you're just free to produce. As long as it's not on an actor, you're free to produce anything with with directors. Well, let me let, again. Let me say I'm taking this as a point of view that in the in the legislation of if you read the rules, it doesn't say you can't. Okay. And there are other agents who do. And the key to this is that you know it's like anything. If you're doing a good job, at, I mean a good job that you keep, uh, you have a certain work ethic, you keep, you have a uh, good value system and it emanates out. If you've been corrupt or you've been doing things dishonest and you get caught into problems, then I don't think you're going to wind up keeping your agency license and that'll, that one will deter the other and it'll, you'll trip over yourself. Right. So in other words, I have to maintain a certain standard when I do this and not just errantly I can just go and produce. I do have to maintain my agency license, maintain my bond um, uh, position, and at the same time I produce, I have to be really clear about what that means. So as a, I'm sorry to ask no, no. business questions, but 
So you you own the agency? Is that, is that still There's true? one co-owner. No, that the agency only exists. It's IPG Intellectual Property. Okay. Um, so obviously it's it's a, it's a smart business thing for you to be in to, to keep your agency license there. Mm -hmm. But as an individual agent, what, what's the difference between that and being a manager? What does it matter? Well, the IPG group is a manage uh, our managers, and I'm the only agent there. Oh. So um, you know my feeling my feeling is this. I go back to something very basic. You you have to figure out how to do business in in a way that fits the current market conditions. That's the key. Look, you made ten million. Put it in perspective. You're a writer, screenplay writer, and you got a million dollars for writing a screenplay. It was ten years ago. You haven't had a writing assignment for ten years. Somebody comes up, says, you know, Mary, Joe, wants to hire you again. You want to pay your scale plus ten percent. And you say, wait, I got a million dollars 10 years ago. They go, great. You want the job, you don't want the job, right? So what are the market conditions? Supply and demand. There are plenty of other writers who have written for those 10 years to prove the point that they can continue to warrant that $1 million. You, by the, by the way the market works, as we know, um, supply and demand and success, translation is, you know, level of success, you're not going to get that million dollars. Now, yeah, maybe if you're uh, Steven Spielberg and you take five years off and he still wants his $10 million, yeah, probably. But look at the level of billions and billions and billions of dollars that he has earned for corporate universe. So I would just say, you know, this, this, you know, this issue about um, how to see yourself is unfortunately, hopefully, reflected by the fact that when you have a representative like someone like me, we become your eyes and ears and tell you the truth about what you can expect and what not to expect. Now, just just so we clear up this one thing, so agent, what's an agent's purpose in a writer's life? Because it's not, if I'm correct, it is not to babysit them, take care of them constantly, all those kinds of things. <laughs> Could you well, let me ask you this question. Go around. Is everybody, no one here in this in this group has ha ever had an agent or a representative? Yeah, we've had some. People right. Know, yeah. Attorneys. Anybody represented by attorneys? Yeah. Right. Right. Um, um, you know, look, I was saying to you about earlier. Everybody has to do it the way they feel comfortable. And you, what is it about any relationship? It's it's person. It's the personalities. Um, it's the characteristics of somebody that you relate to. And if you don't like being your hand your um, hand being held, and you don't like um, you know um, um, you know kind of sarcastic sarcastic humor, or you don't like somebody being too direct or too strong, you have to make a decision and a determination as you meet people who you like and who you don't like. It gets down to likability. To me, first is likability, second is how smart they are, and third is what, how they understand the marketplace. Because if somebody you don't like, that you can't stand, knows all those other two, I don't know how m long you can be tolerant of having that, that pond every day, because it's like a marriage. I don't want to go too deep on this. Some of us don't want to wake up with certain people. Why are we doing it? You know, and some of us have worked out, I'm not going to wake up with that person again. I'm changing, I'm changing boats. And it's the same principle. If you don't like the person, and whatever that means, I mean, like in the sense of their constitution, their vitality, their insight, their, their ability um, to be able to comment on your material in such a way that it improves it, makes it better without hurting your feelings and criticizing you. So it's not about you, it's about the material and the story. You, it, it, it's, um, it's, um, it's a balance. And I, I, you know, as I look around here, there's mature faces here. I don't think there's anybody in this, in this room right now who doesn't have uh, the ability um, or the wherewithal to be able to make a decision when you like somebody or you don't like. Whether you tolerate that is up to you. Tolerance is a whole different aspect of this. But it's up to you. There's nobody here who's going to tolerate somebody poking you all the time and, and it doesn't feel good. You, to a point, you may, you may not be able to punch him in the nose. That may, not, that may be a little bit too volatile. But what you might do is take your marbles and walk away and say, you know what, I'm gonna, I'd rather be unrepresented than represented somebody who I don't like, who really doesn't give a shit about me. It's all about the money. Now, does so this you're, apply to mother-in-laws also? I guess. <laughs> <laughs>